Oh, yeah, boys and girls, children, and I'm off to a good start. I already threw this thing on the ground. So, welcome back to another video. This one's going to be very exciting, and uh, I hope that you stick around for it. I hope the last video was interesting to you, and um, it was something that you could actually use. So, today's date making it all colorful up here is the 9th 10 9 2017 welcome back to another video um, I'm gonna wipe this off even better and in the process I'm gonna talk about what we did last time so I'm getting into some things here that I spent many years thinking about and looking at and that's really where I got a lot of my intuition was just the experience that I've that I've had for such a long time playing around with these things so if you're brand new to this um, you know just stick with it do your best and uh, hopefully things will make sense as you progress through your own experience um, but there's one like very important thing and I have a bunch of notes here um, there's a few things I'd like to talk about of course but one of them is um, is I tried to, to, to explain what I just erased on the board and I didn't do a, a perfect job so I was a little tired that day today I've actually got a migraine but I'm gonna do this anyway because I want to get you guys this information that I have been thinking about um, so one one individual left a comment and made a good there's actually quite a few great comments on that video but one of them was someone noticed a little blip that I did. So here's a capacitor, right? These are the grounds, the negative. Um, the positive, I had a, a switch, um, and then I had a diode, and then I had an inductor, right? So this is positive voltage, this is uh, 60 volts and this was zero volts and what I did was I had my power supply connected still right so here I had the power supply still connected and something happened and this is kind of a cool thing so in this scenario where we transferred from here to here we got a split or a full transfer depending on if we had the check valve or not right and even if we have a resistor we still get a split doesn't matter but when we get an inductor we're actually flowing that energy from one side to the other so I ended up with about um, 58 volts here and no I'm sorry the opposite I ended up with about 2 volts here 2 volts here and 58 volts here my handwriting is amazing nobody said you had to spell read or write to really accomplish your goals did they Anyway, um, so what happened was, was this is like the normal transfer when I have an inductor and a diode, right? Check valve going through here. We build up our, our momentum, right? Like water in a pipe. We get it flowing. It's hard to stop. So as it, as it starts to, to equalize, it's still flowing and it transfers all this. And we have a check valve there. Can't get it to go backwards, so it's going to have to go this way. Um, and actually, in this scenario, you should check voltage across your drop here because that's important but anyway the point is is um, what happens this is a question what happens if I leave the power supply connected right so without the power supply connected I get 2 volts and 58 volts well if I have the power supply connected that means I have 60 volts continuous all the time coming in the system so is it not true right that this is still going to act exactly the same as it did but instead of um, instead of our curve you know going like this right in this one going like this instead of that this curve right this one here is actually going to stay straight so what you're going to end up with is you're going to end up with the top one staying the same the entire time and if that's the case, then the potential no longer balances right here, 
right? This is like the zero balance where they're both balanced out, and now it's now it's going the reverse, and so it's it's got like the air pressure, right? It's slowing down because it's at equal. Well, in this case, we get exactly the same thing, right? So this point, right, is the zero, but it's zero at 60 volts. So what we get here would actually be, um, in the best case scenario, of course there's some losses like I talked about here um, as resistance, but what will happen is you actually get 120 volts. So just by adding a diode and an inductor, and then keeping this a constant voltage and not allowing it to swing down like this, you can actually get 120 volts over here when you only had 60 volts here. Just a diode and an inductor, and of course a spark gap. If you do it, if you do it right, if you time it right, you can get it to, to transfer. Not really a spark gap necessarily, but the idea of timing. Right? You shut it and you open it exactly at the right timing and you'll not allow that to come back because what is a switch if it's open? The exact same thing. It's a check valve. won't allow it to come back. Right? So this is an interesting thing that I was actually going to demonstrate and forgot. So I'm just showing you here so that you, uh, you can grasp this idea. Um, I think that's really the only thing I want to cover from last video. Feel free to ask questions, and I'll do my best to answer them. Um, I'm not an expert in this field, just so you guys know. I'm just showing you some basic principles. And um, what's really important for me, personally, is these basic principles are exactly that. There are things of which, if you're going to play in this field, you need to understand those super basic concepts. You have a capacitor, you know, you have a switch, you have a diode, you have a coil, and you have another capacitor, or even if you don't have those, or whatever you're wanting to try, do extensive testing on those basic things, right? Learn about them. Learn about the phase angle of the current and voltage, and learn about all these things. Um, I'll link some resources in the description. So, just throwing that out there, it's very important for you guys to actually understand that it's important to understand these things. Okay, so today we're actually going to be talking about energy. Um, but the first thing that I want to bring to your attention is everything I talk about and everything I say is my viewpoint, right? Because I've learned on the bench or, or through other means that I've, that I've learned, right? I've tested that what I'm going to tell you is correct, but don't take my word for it, okay? Just do it on your own time and make it realized for yourself that it is the proper way of looking at, us, at such things. Because if you just take my word for it, it's not good enough. Because you need to believe for yourself. So I wanted to talk about goals real quick. Because I've been doing this for I guess 11 years or something and from the beginning I just believed that it was going to work and I had faith that I could do it. Um, I also had faith that I couldn't do it alone, which is why everything is open source, because I need help from you guys. I need your feedback, your input. It's all wonderful. Um, even when it's totally against everything I'm saying, it's actually helpful because it makes me rethink, right? And then it makes me realize, well, am I actually wrong or right? Am I thinking of that right or wrong? So, so be faithful, okay? Step number one in, in your goal, of achieving your goal, is being faithful, believing that you can do something without seeing it yet. You know, that's biblical, non-biblical, all the rounds, right? Everything. Um, so believe in your goal. Have faith in it. And the second thing is understanding that it's possible. So when you have a really strong goal and you have faith in it, you need to have this little piece of you that says it can be achieved and, you know, and give yourself some, some understanding in whatever way that is. And hopefully these videos are helping you understand that these things are possible if you can do it. Um, and then the last thing is pursuing those goals with no doubts. As soon as you put even the tiniest little seed of doubt in your head, then you'll eventually fall back on that doubt. And, and, and you gotta be careful because sometimes you'll, you'll go really, really far and you'll end up that, you'll realize that you were actually wrong about something and then you need to accept that you were wrong, you need to go back and fix your mistake and you need to keep going from where you left off at that point. I've done that myself a few times. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that. 
So here goes the first bold claim. I'm going to make a few. These are my opinions, but I absolutely cannot deny them because it is the way it is. And you will see if you look. So do I want to use purple? No. I like this blue. Everyone is searching for over unity. Well, what if I told you there's no such thing as over unity? Oh man, a whole bunch of you just was like, oh crap, son. But seriously, what is there though, right? There's only unity. There's no such thing as over unity. There's only unity. Why is that? Because that's the way it is. Look around. You'll see what I'm talking about. And I'll get into it more here in a minute. Um, I was going to talk about COP, but I'll leave it out because unity and over unity drop into the category of COP. So I will, I will just leave that guy out. Um, so let me ask you a simple question. Okay, I've been talking this whole time, I'm going to erase this, but I will put it up in the corner. No such thing as over unity, only unity. This is good. This is very good. It may, it's, if you try to claim OU, then everybody will laugh at you, right? But if you try to cl claim unity, well, maybe you'll get somewhere. So, let me ask you a question. When you plug in something to the wall, where does that energy come from, right? I charge these capacitors. Remember, we never talked about how we got this charge in the first place. We only talked about having the charge and then doing something with it to make it a much, much more efficient system, somewhere near unity, right? Not over unity. So we got to think physics again, right? But in, in general, always think in physics because we're going to do that. Mathematically, they do what they need to to get it done, but it's not always going to help you in this realm. So how do you fill up this capacitor? You plug a power supply into the wall, or you use a battery, which is chemistry. But if you have a capacitor, you can't do that, right? You have to fill it up with some other means, battery. In this case, I'm going to use the outlet. You plug something into the outlet, right? So I was going to draw this out, but I'm not going to draw this out. Maybe I will draw this out. So you have, um, you, have your, you have your capacitor, right, plus and minus. And then you have your power supply, right, whatever that is. So you, you plug it in, you charge it up. That's where you get your energy from, right? But this little guy doot, goes to your wall, right, of your little house. And where does that come from? Well, obviously, <laughs> it comes from the telephone line and or the power line, right, down the road. And then where does that come from? In this scenario, let's just say it came from hydroelectric. Yeah? So it came from hydroelectric. So over here, you have a, um, a generator generating electricity, right, in a hydroelectric dam. So you've got some body of water, and this body of water right, is in a reservoir. And there's another reservoir down here somewhere, and it's full of water as well. And then it's a river, and it goes on down its way, okay, or whatever the case may be. So what happens is this water goes through the turbine, right? It goes through the turbine into this other water. So we went from potential energy to kinetic energy to potential energy. Kinetic was actually the water flowing. But you got to remember, in this scenario, right, you've got a lake full of water and you got a lake full of water. Well, you didn't lose any water. The water just went through the turbine, created electricity, went down the power line, went into your house, plugged into your power supply, and charged your capacitor. So you got to look at this whole system and ask yourself, right, ask yourself, if I can't get free energy, right, if I can't generate it on the bench, then what is this? What is this? Right? 
What is this system as a whole? Right? Now, somebody, somebody had to build this channel, probably. Somebody had to build this generator. Somebody has to take care of these telephone poles and all this stuff, right? Somebody had to wire up your house. You had to have someone else build this power supply. Someone else made this capacitor. All these things, but at the end result, right? When you look at the end result, and you forget about all the things that had to be made, created, uh, you know, and set up for you to plug that into your wall, you just have to start with this potential. There was potential there. It was turned into what we use in the wall as electricity, and it went back to potential at a different state, right? Higher potential, lower potential, potential difference. That is the key to this whole entire thing, is a potential difference, and using that potential difference. That's, that's electricity, right? Okay, so that brings us to the next question. Okay, this is going to get real fun. You guys ready for this? All right. I don't exactly know where to start because this is going to get fun. Um, all right, let me check something. Okay, so here's what they say. All right, they say energy is not destroyed, it cannot be created. And they say we live in a sea of energy, okay? So there's your sea of energy, okay? I'm sitting in a sea of energy. I'm in a boat, I'm in a sea of energy, right? The water is the sea of energy, okay? And I'm rowing my boat down the sea of energy, and I decide to myself, hey, I'd like to be able to create some potential difference here so that I can use it for something I'd like to do, other than just being in a sea of energy. So I grab an empty glass, right? And I take this glass, and what do I do with this glass? Well, I reach down, right? I scoop up some of that sea of energy, okay? Now I have a full glass of energy, right? Now, when I scoop this up, what happened to the sea? It created a void, did it not? You've scooped up some out of the sea. Well, what does it do? Nature fills it back in. And because you're in such a vast sea of energy, nobody's going to know. Nobody's going to miss, right? Nobody's going to miss this little bit of energy. So I take in this energy, and the higher I raise it, the more potential, right? The more potential energy there is. So if I take this potential energy, right, and I pour it over here across outside the boat, right? and I pour it through a turbine, well, guess what? The water goes back into the sea of energy, right? And I'm left with an empty cup again. But the energy went back into the sea of energy. So if you can wrap your head around the idea of taking a glass and scooping it out, creating a void, nature filling in the void, right? Nature takes care of that all for you, right? And it's so big. Right? It's so big that you're not even going to notice it. The sea is so big of energy. You create a potential difference. Now, you might ask yourself, well, Russ, you had to do some work to, to scoop that up. Well, what if I could tell you I just set this glass out and I let it rain? Okay? In my boat. Thunderstorm. Where did that come from? Nature did it. Nature totally absorbed through evaporation the water out of the sea of energy dumped it into the glass, and now I just get to pour it down my turbine, create some electricity, right? So nature does the work for you. You don't necessarily need to completely understand how that works. All you really care about is, well, I'm sitting in a sea of energy, I've got no energy, it rains, and now I've got a whole glass of, di of potential energy that I can put to work, right? I can do something with this energy. And that's the whole key to understanding the idea, the simple idea of there is no over unity. It's all unity. Nature is unity. Okay? Nature is unity. You can't get past that. All right? So let's get back to the whiteboard. All right. Back at the board. Now ask yourself, how did the water get here? How did the potential get here to create this electricity from the turbine that we humans had to build 
the infrastructure we had to put together, the house we had to build, the wiring we had to do, the power supply that someone else had to make, an engineer, and we bought, and then to charge our little capacitor to do our simple experiment. When you look at this as a global system, right, nature is a COP of one. Nature is unity. You can't ever get above that. But what you can do, and is what people do, is they say, well, I'm going to isolate this generator. I'm going to isolate it. And I'm going to say, it's, right, its efficiency is 80% efficient. Because within this, you could argue that there are losses. But if you, if you only care about charging this capacitor and you only care about where you got it from, well, you got it from nature filling up this reservoir, period. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. So personally, I claim that there is no overunity. You know, that's my, that's my bold claim, is there's no such thing as overunity. There's only unity because you've got to do your calculations as a whole. And if you're sitting in a sea of energy, right, and you've got all this potential around you, if you let nature fill the reservoir, then what happens? It's a pretty, pretty deep fundamental question. What happens when you let nature fill the reservoir? So that's what we're going to get into, okay? That's what we're going to get into. So I have this feeling, um, you know, if you didn't like hydroelectric, you could look at wind and a wind turbine. Nature provides the wind. You throw a wind turbine up there, you've got free energy. Nobody can deny that, right? You can only talk about the efficiency of the generator because we close it as a system and we say, well, it's only 80%. But if you looked at the whole system, you can go, well, it's unity, right? It's perpetual. As long as the wind blows, you're generating electricity. As long as the lake gets filled up, you're generating electricity. That notion is perpetual until, of course, something happens with the atmosphere. If, it's a, if this is being filled by a natural spring, something happens to the spring. But the point is, is that system is perpetual until something breaks within it, right? and you get to fill up your little cap and do your experiments on the bench. Solar panels are the same way. All forms of, of free energy, you just have to look at it in the right perspective, right? Unity. So I bet you guys have all experienced free energy yourself and you didn't even realize it. But when you're sitting in your car, right, or you're walking down the hallway, carpeted hallway of your house, right, and you reach for that door or you get out of the door of the car and you get zapped where did that come from, right? That was potential energy that you generated by walking or by scruffling, whatever the case might be, but nature filled the reservoir that you got zapped by. Nature did that. So if nature can do that, why can't nature fill up this capacitor? But instead of doing it like this, can it fill it up within the system itself? That's the question. Can nature fill itself as it's running in operation in a in a system like this because if you consider nature as the ability to fill up a circuit while you're using it then you'd have to consider that an open system right if you put it in a box and the box was sealed to everything including the nature the atmosphere everything around it everything then you could say it's a truly closed system and therefore you cannot have any more energy come into the system so that you can use it at a difference in potential. But if the system is open to your environment, to fields, to even electromagnetic radiation from the sun, anything you can think of that nature does all by its beautiful self, then you should be able to take a circuit and generate potential within the circuit. And that's what we're going to look at. We're going to see is that possible and how do you do it, okay? So a famous quote by Nikola Tesla, Nikola, I'm probably going to pronounce it wrong, Mr. Tesla, um, is, you know, that we were going to tap into the wheelworks of nature someday for our electricity. Well, we already do that with the hydroelectric dam, right? We already do that. We let nature do its thing, and we just use the potential indifference. But, unfortunately, we got to pay for the generator from the power company. we got to pay for the telephone poles and the wires that got put up. we got to pay for the service that gets done here. Somebody's got to come out and connect it to our house. Somebody's got to build this house. Somebody's got to put the wiring in. Somebody's got to build the power supply and put the power supply together. And then you have to pay to charge this capacitor. But if your house 
was right next to this reservoir, like I mentioned in the last video, right? If your house was right there, then all you need to do is tie into the generator next to a waterfall and you're home free. You have to do that, right? You have to pay for that yourself, but when it's all set up and running and operational and nothing breaks, then technically, as long as that river doesn't run out and nothing breaks, that's a perpetual unity operation that you can extract. So there you go. Like I said, you want free energy? Go live next to a waterfall. <laughs> okay. Um, so there's no such thing as over unity. Energy cannot be created nor destroyed. Therefore, the system as a global unit would be unity. Right? But within a system, right, within a, a system, right, of a, of a diode, inductor, capacitor, should have drawn those like that earlier, a capacitor, right, within this system, the question is, is can you, can you do something, can you disrupt the system in such a way that you allow nature to fill the void? That's the question. Is this possible? And I left you guys a teaser in the last video. And I was very specific about what it was. Okay? And I said it's like water hammer. So I'm going to I'm going to ask a question and I'm going to give you guys <coughs> Excuse me, I want to give you guys some uh, your own research to do this time. Um So first of all, I want you to I want you to read about cavitation, specifically water hammer cavitation. But there is acoustic cavitation, and there are other forms of cavitation. And you should read all about cavitation, and you should understand what cavitation is, so that you can grasp what I'm going to tell you in the future when we get there. Okay, whenever that is. Who knows? But right now I'm bringing it up because I want you to go do the homework. I want you to read about cavitation and look it up. And I have one last question for you. The whole purpose of these videos is to make you realize that the load does not consume the energy. And that, that's a bold statement, isn't it? Right? We already went through this. And I, I'm kind of hoping I can explain this in a future video, but I honestly don't know if, it, if you guys are going to grasp what I'm trying to say. So you have to figure this stuff out on your own. I mean, you got to read about this stuff, and you got to determine um, whether or not it's true. So, if I have a battery, and uh, and let's just say I have an inductor or light bulb, whatever you want, if I tell you that if this battery Right, you can actually go look up the shelf life of a battery. If I'm telling you that this battery discharges itself, which it does, if you set it on a shelf and you come back 10 years later, it'll be dead. I guarantee you, and you try to charge it and it'll be done sulfated and it had problems and everything else. But the point is, is that this will self-discharge. So if I connect this to a, a load, okay, and this load is claimed to not consume the energy, then, then, then ask yourself, this is, the, this is the fundamental thing here, ask yourself, how is it possible that this produces light? If the battery discharges itself with or without a load, and if you close the circuit like this, then it's the same type of discharge, and the load does not consume the energy, where does the light come from? Okay, and this is a question I want you to answer, because what I'm telling you, what I'm making the statement right here is that this light is being generated by the actual load itself. Because the energy is at a different potential, it can create this effect, but the effect isn't the energy, right, being like transformed into a new form of energy in, in the mindset that I'm thinking. Um, it's, it, this gets into a very argumentative section of discussion. But I'm, I'm just trying to ask the question, this is the question. This light bulb manifests 
its own light. It comes from within the load. Because if you don't put the light bulb there and you short this thing out, the battery still gets depleted. You put a load there, and now you get light, visible light that you can see. So the question is, is this comes from within itself. How does that happen? Now don't get me wrong, if you have no potential difference connected, then you don't get light. But if we have one unit of energy, right, and one unit of energy coming out, but I just told you energy isn't consumed. The energy is not consumed. So where does this come from? And I'm telling you it comes from the load itself. And I'll hopefully explain that because I don't want to get into it in this video. But if we want to stick with electron theory, and I know a lot of you don't, <laughs> but if you do, and you'd like to stick with electron theory, which is probably the best way to explain it, at least so everyone can grasp it, because you can read up on that theory and you can understand it. So where, you know, if, you, if none of the electrons are consumed, which they are not, they're not consumed, right? That's the energy. The energy is, uh, I don't, I don't want to get into that, because I want to ask you this question and see if you guys can come up with the answer, but I gave you some hints there. Because if you don't do your own research, you won't learn. And I'm not going to be able to hand this stuff to you on a golden platter. Because that's not the way life works. I can only teach you and make you do some homework and actually come up with the answers yourself so that you can compare them with my answers so that we can argue whether the answers are correct or incorrect. But that's the end of this video series. Uh, not, I'm sorry, not the end of the video series. That's the end of this particular video. I think I've covered everything I want. And... Nature as a whole in this sea of energy is unity. It's perpetual, right? If energy cannot be created or destroyed, it must be perpetual. And in order to do work, you need a difference of potential energy. And how does that potential energy become different? You walking down the hallway and getting zapped, right? The evaporation of water into a, a lake above the one below it, and you use that energy. Nature does it. Let nature fill in the void. All right? Go read up on cavitation so that I can explain to you in the next video or sometime what it is I'm trying to express. Peace and love. God bless. Do go read the Bible more. All right? Because your mindset by reading that will help you understand this stuff. Because it's about giving, loving, right? Grace, caring. It's about those things. It really is. You're designing something that's giving, not just taking. Because if you're standing around all your life taking stuff from people and you don't ever give anything, you don't ever get joy out of that. It doesn't bring you anything. There's nothing wrong with that if that's the way you want to live. But, I mean, well, I guess there is something wrong with that because that's kind of what I'm saying. Don't do that. I mean, sometimes you have to be the receiver, but sometimes you got to be the giver. And if nature does all this, perpetually, then we can make a circuit that feeds itself as you're using the potential difference. And I have faith that we can make that work. Bye-bye. Let me know what you know in the comments and over at the forums. God bless you guys. Have a good day.